so thank you, everybody, for being here at this uh, special session of the Applied Machine Learning Days, specifically focused on generative AI. Uh, it's a welcome, it's a pleasure uh, to welcome all of you uh, here from EPFL uh, or from other academic and nonprofit institutions uh, or from uh, industry in the area uh, to specifically talk about uh, an important problem or not necessarily problem, but opportunity uh, coming uh, over the next few years. Um, and I like to describe this opportunity in terms of this quote that was given to me uh, by Jim Laris a few months ago, that generative AI is the fourth wave of the computing revolution. Uh, following the first wave, personal computers, the second one, which was the web, and the third one, uh, which was mobile. And I like this quote because it has two implications. Uh, the first, that generative AI is coming and is something that we are going to have to reckon with in the years to come, but also that there does remain some time uh, to try to figure out what is the best way of integrating these technologies into society, uh, into industry, uh, and into our day-to-day -day lives. It took a while for the first personal computers to make it into everybody's houses, it took a while for everybody to connect to the web, and it took a while uh, for all of us to be on our cell phones uh, constantly uh, since the first smartphones came out 15 or so years ago. With generative AI, it'll be the same thing. And so this presents an opportunity to really think about how we want that interaction between these new technologies uh, and most of us uh, to be. And so the goal of today is to really start that discussion, uh, to be able to think about how we actually want uh, ourselves to interact with these technologies uh, over the next few years and even beyond that. And so the goal of today was to really gather some of the best speakers uh, to, discuss, uh, to discuss these questions, you know, both on the technical side, the technologies that are driving this way forward, the societal side, uh, you know, what types of regulations we should think about uh, as these technologies become more pervasive, the economic side, how it is going to affect uh, the job market in the future, uh, as well as uh, you know, issues of intellectual property, security, and privacy. And then finally, also, you know, its impact on some of our most important societal institutions, uh, such as the healthcare system uh, that is uh, in place. And so to have this discussion, we've invited some of the best people to speak on these topics. So we'll start off uh, our discussion today uh, with Angela Fan uh, from Meta AI Research, who's gonna tell us about Llama 2, one of the largest open source models that are available uh, to actually uh, be used and be implemented in pipelines uh, across the world. Then we will have a talk uh, by Dragos Tudorash, uh, who is a member of the European Parliament, who will talk about foundation models and how they are uh, handled in the EU AI Act. After that, we'll hear from Daniel Rock, uh, who will tell us about how these uh, generative AI technologies are going to impact labor markets in the years to come. And then we'll hear from Amir Zamir, uh, who will tell us about multimodal foundation models. So moving beyond the language-only systems we've seen so far with ChatGPT and GPT-4, uh, but instead uh, how uh, the visual modality can be integrated into these technologies as well. Following uh, a lunch, we will hear from Evelina Fedorenko, uh, who is gonna tell us about you know, how language uh, intersects uh, with neurodata and specifically you know, whether or not it is modeled the same way as thought in human brains. We'll hear from Kyung Hyun Cho, who will tell us about uh, uh, language models for healthcare systems. And then we'll hear from Negam Shah, who will speak about shaping the creation and adoption of these large language models in healthcare. After hearing for a few hours about the opportunities of these systems, we'll hear from a panel of folks who will speak a bit more to the risks. Uh, so we'll have Carmela Troncoso, who will speak about the security and privacy issues associated uh, with large language models, foundation models, and generative AI. We'll hear from Sabine Sustrunk, who will talk about disinformation and deep fakes, and specifically how these technologies uh, can affect you know, how quickly false information uh, is disseminated and as well from Gaetan de Rassenfoss, who will talk about the intellectual property challenges uh, of large-scale AI, specifically you know, in the whole pipeline that goes from building a model to getting an output, who owns what in that pipeline? And that'll be moderated uh, by our own Marcel Sarate. And then finally, in the evening, we'll wrap up with a session uh, that starts with Jonathan Frankel, who'll talk about you know, how we can actually train 
uh, these neural networks at scale uh, with algorithmic advances that make them a lot more efficient. We'll hear from Josie Hughes about how these foundation models are going to accelerate robot design. And then finally, we'll hear from Ed Greffenstedt, who will answer the big question, what comes next in all of this? So really today is about starting that discussion. And in order to do that, our goal has been to make everything about Gen AI. As you've seen here, we've taken the liberty of representing our speakers today uh, using generative AI tools uh, such as Midjourney. Uh, all the music that you'll hear between the talks will also have been generated by generative music agents. The menu you will have at lunch today was actually not developed by Gen AI. <laughs> I tried to convince the caterers that they should do that, but they rightfully refused, uh, which was probably a good call on their part. And so after today, I just want to make note that we also have three very exciting workshops tomorrow that are going to dive deeper into the technical concepts that we'll cover today. So first, we'll have a tech workshop that specifically dives deep into the technologies of scale, as well as uh, multimodality and how different modalities can be integrated into these systems. We'll have uh, an incredible workshop as well on the policy issues. Uh, of generative AI, uh, with some of the leading figures discussing exactly how we should design a good regulatory framework around these topics. And then finally, we are an academic institution, and a lot of what we do here at EPFL uh, is scientific research. And so we have a great set of folks that are going to talk about how we can actually use generative AI to accelerate science and scientific discovery. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm incredibly happy to see such a large audience here to have this discussion with us today. And on that note, I will hand it off, hand it off to Rudiger Urbanke, the Dean of Computing and a professor at EPFL. Thank you, Antoine. Uh, on behalf of EPFL, I would like to convey my warmest welcome to all of you, the speakers, the decision makers, the VIPs, the academics, uh, all the exciting people here that are here to join us. Um, and perhaps, given how much we have been um, actually suffering for the last few weeks with heat, maybe it's even better if I wish you a very refreshing welcome here to EPFL. Now, we all know why we're here, right? As Antoine said, we are in a unique position, a position that maybe appears once every 50 years of being able to shape the future. That means seizing the opportunities, the enormous opportunities that are ahead of us with this new te technology, but of course also thinking about the considerable risks that are here. And so, um, of course, here at EPFL, we have three main missions. One is teaching, research, and tech transfer. And so, of course, we have been thinking about how we can seize on these things. So let me just, you know, in short notes, tell you a few things we have already done. Uh, Tania Kesa and Antoine have started a very large educational initiative. And let me put me in my own words, what, what are we trying to achieve? You know, could a large language model pass, for example, an EPFL or get an EPFL degree? How do students interact with these large language models or these large models itself? And more importantly then, how should we shape our educational system so that the people that we educate will come out to take full advantage of this new technology and are prepared for the things to come? So that's just the start on education. Uh, what about research? Well, uh, as Antoine already mentioned, at least two of the speakers we have today will give you a narrow window in the many things uh, research-wise that we have already started. These will be Amir Samir and Josie Hughes, and you will hear later on from them um, what they have already started. So very exciting things happening also on the research side. And finally, on the tech transfer side, um, so uh, Martin Jaggi and Antoine have uh, initiated a project to start an open source trainer that's now used you know, across the globe in many of the exciting uh, uh, training opportunities, you know, $70 billion parameter models, um, and that does extremely well. And they have not just made this open source available to many, and so done their contribution to tech transfer, but also here on campus, okay? We are training models of the size of 7 billion now routinely. We're just starting training something on the size of 70 billion, and that's really just the start of our ambition. So I hope that uh, many of you are as excited about these opportunities as we are. I hope that you will join us, and I hope that I will get the opportunity to talk to many and interact with many of you during the day. I wish you a fantastic uh, conference, and I'm handing it back to Antoine. Thank you.
Uh, so thank you, Rudiger, uh, for that, uh, I guess, great uh, introduction to the things that we are doing here on campus uh, uh, around large language models. Uh, so once again, I want to thank everybody for being here. We've got an exciting day planned, and you know, rather than listen to me talk about it, I think it's better if we just get started.